What is it about this story and particularly the character of Mowgli that you think is so continually compelling for audiences? Right, so um, obviously this book was written in the in the 19th century and it's a long time ago, but um, I think it, it, it really is able to kind of apply to today's culture, especially for kids of, oh sorry, especially for kids of my age because um, I mean, obviously kids of my age, you know, teenagers with social media and everything, we are going through a lot. We're being, you know, people are being judged because they look a certain way or whatever and they're being forced to be a different person. They're not, they're being forced to not be true to themselves. And I think Mowgli, obviously it's on a much bigger scale, but he's fighting between these two worlds, the world of animals and the world of humans. And I think that really shows uh, uh, kids of my age and frankly everyone that they, that they can be true to themselves and they can pick their own unique path. You talk about working with a master storyteller like Andy Serkis and what that experience was like for you. Yeah, so Andy, I mean, he was really the king of motion cap of performance capture, and it's just it really is amazing to just see see him in action, just even without the makeup or the uh, the the uh, just without anything. It's just amazing to see him with just drop into the character and really just bring the character to life. And as far as working with him from like the actor and director's point of view, um, I mean, he is really just an actor's director. He knows what it's like to be in front of the camera. And it, 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 he also knows, like, obviously, you know, this is a complex character and everything, so he's there to guide me and to, to kind of push me through the role and get me into the mind of Mowgli while being able to give me that freedom that an actor really needs and able to explore, uh, to be able to explore and, um, and really discover their character. Talking about actors, it's an astonishing lineup of co-stars you have. I'm wondering how much of a chance you got to uh, work with them or to at least use their performances as reference while you were performing yourself. Yes, yeah, so actually, um, I, I did get to physically work with them, which was you know fantastic because it, it was really just amazing to uh, to work across from these guys like Christian Bale, Kate Blanchett, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Andy Serkis. Obviously, they are the best at what they do. They are the best in the business, and it was really amazing to be able to get that that physical kind of uh, interaction with them and that that uh, that feedback that you don't get with um, with like a, a ping pong ball or a or a tennis ball or something. So yeah, certainly agree they're the best in the business. I'm curious, what do you think makes people I mean, guess like Benedict, like s such special talents to work alongside. Yeah, I really think that is that it is their uh, probably commitment to the role and the way they just really embody the character and they step into the shoes of the character and get into the head of the character and really bring that character to life. Um, yeah, I think that's that's probably what makes them the most successful. I mean, obviously, it is really great to work with them and to try to incorporate that into my own acting abilities. So. I think this film is really about going back to the original Rudyard Kipling uh, book. It kind of feels um, like there's a real authenticity to where it's coming from. Uh, Andy has made sure that we incorporate a lot of scenes which, uh, which are set in India. Uh, so it has that real sense of the colonial version of India that uh, Rudyard Kipling was uh, writing in. But also I think... Um, you know, with his motion capture work, it's unprecedented. I mean, no one's ever seen facial uh, expressions like this on animals that are so convincing. And I think, um, you know, the, I mean, a lot of the film is in close-up. So you get, um, you get real kind of acting performances from such an incredible cast. And, and so from that point of view, um, it's been amazing to score. Also, the idea of going over to South Africa, spending time with Andy in the jungle, actually, you know, really experiencing it was really invaluable as a composer. I wanted to make sure that um, I kind of spent time with um, uh, trying to get the theme, Mowgli's theme right, and so so I kind of spent ages just looking at different uh, different scenes with with Mowgli, with Rohan Chand, kind of performing in all kinds of different psychological states, and then each time I was playing the piano along with those, so that I could kind of get. Uh, get a theme that kind of works with every aspect of who Mowgli was and that was really interesting then everything kind of came from that I guess so it was about finding Mowgli's theme first and then everything once you have that overture you know everything can be taken from that and uh, and then the whole universe kind of gradually unfolds. So I've been very lucky to know Andy for a very long time I mean I I met him uh, I don't know about 15 years ago and I worked on um, uh, two video games with him, Heavenly Sword uh, and then Enslaved, which we did together with the brilliant writer-director Alex Garland. Um, then I was lucky enough to work on Breathe last year, which was um, a great film, I think, you know, with Andy Garfield, uh, Andrew Garfield and Claire Foy. Um, so this, this feels like, you know, um, but this film has been going on for quite a while and actually Breathe 
uh, wasn't supposed to be Andy's debut. You know, this was supposed to be his debut, and um, and for whatever reasons, this has been, you know, kind of long time coming. So it's it's fantastic to to have that kind of whole uh, working relationship relationship come to this now. You know, I'm I just think it's a brilliant film, and I said to him when I first saw it, it's a masterpiece, and and I think uh, I still think it is. It, it feels like it's it's the first film like this that I've ever seen that's got a real Shakespeare and gravitas to it, and the acting performances and in the direction cinematography. We're glad that it's here now. What does the future hold for you and Andy? More collaborations and for you yourself? Well, I work, um, I'm work. i working a lot with the Imaginarium. Uh, we're talking about um, all, all kinds of things from augmented reality projects to um, virtual reality and also further kind of uh, TV series and other things. So, yeah, I'm, I'm chatting a lot to Andy about other things we're doing. So, yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're, we're friends, so we're going to carry on working together. Well, the interesting thing about this film was it was written in the late 19th century when the world was going through an incredible pace of change because of technology. And in the early 21st century, we're going through an incredible pace of change. Whenever you go through an incredible pace of change, there always becomes a crisis of identity and who we are. And the film explores that. It explores belonging. It explores a sense of a chaos and a crisis in a sense of self that Mowgli goes through. And I liked it because it didn't sugarcoat the story anymore. What it did was it took all the big numbers out, the song numbers, and allowed you to explore the emotional roller coaster ride of the boy and to explore the themes of the ecology as, as well, the environment. I think obviously this is a film that's being told in a very unique way um, in terms of the approach technically. Can you talk a little bit about that process from your experience? There's no difference. From my experience, there's no difference to any other film. I just completely 100% commit to the film I'm doing. I give 100% to the performance. You can't give 50% and know that the, C the CGI guys will add it for you. You can't. You've got to give 100%. Well, the best actors are great storytellers because what they do is they create a kind of a, a, a choreography of emotions and thoughts that they ride through a film. And what quite, uh, happens quite often with actors who become directors is they create that structure within a film. Very often you'll see a central character that the audience can identify with and can empathize with. Very strong central character and that's what this film has. And that's really common within really great actors who become great directors and that's the talent that Andy has. Talking about great characters, can you tell us a little bit about where you fit into this specific uh, film yourself? I play Vihan, who is the wolf father of Mowgli. So Naomi and I play his parents, and just before he goes on his massive journey, we bring him up. So I play a character called Boot, and he's a young, innocent wolf. He's uh, Mowgli's best friend. And he's, he's an outsider, he's different from the other wolves, and he's, he's trying to fit in, but uh, he's crazy, and that's what everyone loves about him. I mean, you talk about being an outsider, it seems like identity is a really big theme in this uh, version of this classic story. Do you think that gives it a more contemporary resonance than perhaps other versions we've seen before? Yeah, and I mean, it, this, this take is totally close to the book, so it's got more of the, it's sim more similar to the book, it's not sing-songy, and it's for a, it's for an older audience, but but um, yeah, I'd say the main, I'd say the, the moral of the story is is him, is Mowgli and Boot trying to fit in with everyone else. And Mowgli just wants to be a, a wolf. That's all he's ever wanted. And um, yeah, I think saying, yeah, I think that's quite a big, that plays a big part in it, yeah. Of course, motion capture, another unique element of this storytelling. Can you talk a little bit about what the reality of that's like on set? Yeah, I mean, so obviously my character was motion capture and a motion capture is a great thing. It, you can put a suit on and it can turn you into whatever you want from like a, a, a massive 40 foot gorilla to a small like, you know, little wolf. So I suppose that being a motion, like motion capture is, it allows you to be more diverse with who you play. And certainly for this film, there's a lot of, of that in it. Yeah. How does it feel to be officially now part of the Netflix revolution as well? It feels very cool, yeah, it feels great, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been nice working for Netflix, yeah. Well, the thing about this version of the, of the classic story is it's very much based on the original material. And I was brought up on Kipling as a child. My grandmother read it to me when I was little. And I was sort of wildly impressed by the savagery and the reality of those, of those stories. And this is the sort of, if you like, the true version of the, 
of the Jungle Book. It's wild and it's eccentric and it's savage and it's incredibly entertaining, but it's emotional and it's real. Can you talk a little bit about what makes Andy such a fantastic storyteller aside from his obvious talent as a performer? Yeah, well, I'm his business partner, so I'm a bit biased, but I think he's a fantastic storyteller and a fantastic director. And above all, because he's such a great actor himself, he knows how to pull the most amazing performances from his actors. But he has an overall vision, unlike so many directors. He, he, this film is exactly what he set out to make, and that's very unusual. You know, there we were, sort of designing the movie, and five years later, that's the movie that's on the screen, and that's, uh, very few directors can do that. I think obviously in terms of Andy's unique technical approach to this film, I think when people first heard that this was going to be motion capture and they hear the stars attached, they have images of people in um, leotards dancing around pretending to be tigers and bears. Can you talk a little bit about what the reality on set was of that process? It's very complicated because first of all, the actors put in their performances, which is not just facial, it's a body performance as well, and that's captured. And then that's sort of transported digitally to the, to the set where the remarkable Rowan Chan playing Mowgli has to act against sort of models um, and people who are, if you like, playing the part that the actors have already played. So it required an enormous amount of technical know-how on Andy's part, but also an extraordinary amount of creative ability from Rohan, who's put in the most amazing performance. It's obviously a fantastic cast alongside him. I think particularly Benedict as Shere Khan, it's, it's a, I mean, he's one of the iconic villains of uh, storytelling. Can you talk a little bit about um, what you think we see from that character in this that we maybe haven't in the previous versions of the story? Yeah. Well, it's very interesting because, you know, when we were casting the animals, we wanted to create actors, or rather wanted to create characters and animals that had the spirit of the actor within them, not just the performance. And Benedict's version of Shere Khan is very frightening, slightly theatrical, because Shere Khan in our story is playing a role. He is trying to break down the laws of the jungle, and in order to do that, he's not just using his muscle, but he's using his brain. And that's the fantastic thing about the performance capture process, is the wiles of the human condition are implanted in animal form, and that's an extraordinary thing to watch. Having waited such a very long time to share this film with fans, what made you feel that Netflix was the, the right forum to do that? Netflix are phenomenal because I think they allow you to tell a story in a real and a fresh and an innovative way. They're not bound by the conventions of the past. So for us, it's absolutely wonderful that come next Friday, you know, it will be landing in millions and millions, hundreds of millions of homes all over the world. Um, you know, and we had a premiere in Mumbai for this, as well as London, as well as at Los Angeles. And they just are truly global to, make, to, to match a film that is truly global. And that's exciting to us. It's, um, it's a story that, that really looks at what it is to be other, what it means to be, to be an outsider, not, not in the center, and, and how you cope with that. So, it's very contemporary in the sense that there are millions of people in the world now who feel outside, who are refugees of some sort or another, whether physical refugees or sort of emotional, psychological refugees, where they, they, they don't quite fit in. And, and this story is, is really about the, the journey of Mowgli to, fight, to find how he fits in to two very complex, changing worlds. I think in terms of complex, obviously we've seen wonderful motion capture before, but I think um, having human faces transposed into animals is, is another level to that. Can you talk a little bit about your decision to do that and the wonderful cast you have assembled? I mean, we're blessed with, with perhaps one of the best, you know, cast ever, I think, really, in terms of uh, this material. And they all came to it because they loved the story and the approach to the story. But um, 
crucially, they, they wanted to expand their repertoire as actors, actually, and explore what it is to be other, to become something else, you know, a long distance away from yourself, but at the same time bringing your own humanity to the role. So we designed every single one of these characters with the, with the actors in mind. Um, they were cr all, all the... I didn't want to just have voices implanted into kind of photorealistic looking animals. It would be crazy. We wanted, we wanted them to perform. This is a drama, which half of which the story is told by actors who are animals. So, so it's, it's, it, was cr it was the only way to do it, to, to get that level of believability and, and emotion into the story. I mean, it's all about who you think is right for the character, who is who's the quintessential essence of what they are, especially for the animal roles. It's like, who, you know, who, for instance, the first person I cast was Peter Mullen to play Aquila because I could not get out of my mind, my head, the, the, his voice and his stoicism, his kind of granite face as a, as a, as a leader of a wolf pack, um, but an egalitarian leader who, who cares for the whole and isn't just a sort of a, 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 sort of a kingly leader, but more of a, a man of the people. That, so, so you think about things like that. Um, for, you know, for, ben for Benedict to play Shere Khan, it was it was. There's a tiger that is full of rage and, and but also impotence, and so there's a frustration that comes with, with his anger and his hatred of man. To do the fact that he's lame in one foot and that can't hunt, and so he has to kill man's cattle, and by doing that, he brings danger into the jungle. So they're very. All of the animal characters have their own psychology, their own um, you know their own em emotions and their own motivations. So so you need really good actors to be able to pull that off. And then of course at the centre of it is this young man who's, who's just phenomenal. I mean, he truly, I, I, he really embodies what, it, what Mowgli is all about. I mean, he really put himself through it. It's a very, it was a long and arduous process, um, tough shoot for him physically, um, emotionally. I pushed him really, really hard and uh, he's just delivered the most extraordinary performance. I, I think the third part of the movie is, is, is actually all human human beings it's the village which you never normally see in a jungle book adaptation it's normally you know the just the jungle and we sort of leave them as Mowgli goes to to be a man in the village um, there's a really uh, there's a beautiful uh, holy festival scene where where the where Mowgli is becoming assimilated into the world of man and I, I, I think it's it's really a real beautiful contrast to to the savagery of the jungle